Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and with the end of this series rapidly approaching, I think the last thing we have to cover is ISRU, also known as In Situ Resource Utilization. Basically, mining materials, refining it, converting it to usable fuel, and then using that to fund or to power your expeditions further afield. Now, to access this, you are going to have to upgrade your research and development facility because right now you have a 500 as your science limit. You need to get past that to get to the last tier of items. There you get it. You finally get a bridge that's easy to fly under. Yes, uh, the other one's a whole lot harder. So for ISRU, the main pieces you need are under advanced science tech, right? And these are the ISRU converter, the drillomatic mining excavator, and the holding tank. So this mines the stuff, it goes into the holding tank, and then the converter converts it to something useful. As a bonus, this also gives you access to the Gravmax negative gravioli detector, which is one of the best science instruments. It will basically collect biome-specific data from any altitude, which is Fabulous, incredibly useful. Okay, so I'm going to research that. Next tier up gives you access to a better scanner and a, a large holding tank. We don't need to worry about that. Might want to look at high power electrics because it does give you the thermal control system and the fuel cell. The thermal control system was just introduced in 1.03, so it's actually a new feature. It's designed to help you cool your spacecraft. So I'm going to get this just so we have a fuel cell and yeah this next tier up has a fuel cell array. Don't need to worry about that. Then these are ion thrusters. Uh, those you need, you might want to know about but I'm not going to bother. Other things which we haven't covered are uh, the rapier engine. You've probably seen that in a bunch of other videos. It's basically a jet engine that turns into a rocket engine at, a, at the correct altitude. It's called rapier because it's based on the Sabre concept that's being developed and may actually work, who knows, but uh, it'll do the same thing. It'll uh, power the Skylon space plane concept. Anyway, let's go and build a spacecraft. Okay, so I'm not going to show you the full build process, but I just want to show you what the requirements are. This is uh, the rocket that I've built. It will carry a spacecraft, well, it'll carry a spacecraft into orbit, and then the Delta V on this stage will actually carry it to the surface of Minmus, where it will be able to harvest fuel and everything. Now, the important parts that are on this, well, first of all, this is an unmanned spacecraft. Let's go in and take a look. So we have, obviously, a... Um, a probe core here, we have some docking ports to make sure that things can dock to it and refuel. Some of these Gigantor solar arrays because harvesting and refining these things takes a lot of power. Now you must have an ISRU converter, this is the magic box that will take ore and turn it into whatever type of fuel you need. Now. Underneath this, I have a small holding tank. The small holding tank will contain raw, unrefined ore, which is extracted using the drill omatic mining excavators. Now, I've put two on this. If you can balance a spacecraft, you can get away with just putting one of these on there. It's not a problem. And then, of course, I've uh, put some landing gear on this thing. The whole thing will land vertically on the surface. And there's like a little... Uh, liquid fuel engine under there that will actually carry it to orbit. Finally, I have some of these uh, radiators here. Now these extend out when we're mining to make sure that the excess heat is radiated. It is entirely possible to mine and extract and work without the radiators, but it is a very useful thing to perhaps accelerate the process. And uh, also, talking about accelerating the process, I have this little uh, surface scanning module which will give me a little more detailed information about the, the, the quantities of ore available where I am. The rest of the rocket, well, the rest of the rocket is largely designed around getting this thing to the target and uh, making sure that uh, it falls beneath the 140 ton limit. So, 139.6. I figured I wanted to see if I could do this without upgrading the launch pad one more time 
and this is what I came up with. It looks rather interesting with its strange shaped tanks and everything out there, but it does in fact manage it, so let's show how. Okay, so now we're going to go and fly it into orbit, and the good news is you don't actually have to watch every single detail of the launch process, because I've done this a, a dozen times before in this series, and you should by now have a firm grasp on what is required. Now, these external drop tanks, you are going to have to right-click on them to make sure you eject them at the right time, and I forgot. They disintegrate in quite spectacular style. It's important that before this main engine burns out that you do get yourself into a suborbital trajectory because you're going to have to ditch that fairing before you fire the second stage engine. So I got myself up to 80 kilometers and then of course used four times physical time acceleration to get myself up there as quickly as possible so that I could safely ditch the rest of the spacecraft. And there it is, what I've built. It looks rather beautiful, if I do say so myself. A little bit of a thrust there to separate myself from the vehicle, and then, of course, we're just waiting for the right time for orbital insertion. And I'm pretty much just eyeballing the orbital insertion here, flying by the seat of my pants, as they say. Except that seat of my pants means something completely different in British English as opposed to American English, where in Britain, pants means underpants, if you didn't know. I remember being very confused when I read a story about a stilt walker who had very long pants to cover his stilts. That felt very strange in Britain. Anyway, we uh, plot course for Minmus, which requires a burn during a dark and rather unphotogenic part of the orbit. But off we go there, we perform our burns, we perform a capture burn and I decide to put it into a polar orbit. Mostly because the spacecraft that has scanned it is also in a polar orbit and I want to make sure that I pick a landing site which is accessible. So by putting myself into a polar orbit, I make sure I can access any possible orbit, even at the expense of about 10 to 20 you know, meters per second of delta V. It's not something I would worry about. Also, I feel I should point out that I deliberately flew this mission with more aggressive maneuvers than were absolutely required because I wanted to make sure that the spacecraft did actually have enough Delta V. So there's some deliberately sloppy flying in here there for educational purposes only. Okay, so now we're in orbit around Minmus, we can look for the ore, and helpful people pointed out that now when you scanned a planet, it gets an icon on the right here, so you can see the bright pink areas where the ore has been deposited, or whatever your color scheme is. So, that flat area is a good area for me to go to, but I think I'm actually going to wait a whole orbit just to make sure that I can line up with it. One orbit later, I'm now heading towards this uh, target site. Now, I'm actually using RCS to push down my, well, to basically begin my descent, because uh, it's actually good to use up the RCS first. If you've looked at one of the other video on calculating, uh, you know, delta V, then use up your RCS first if you can, where you, where you can. You obviously can't use it on final descent, but you can use it while you're in orbit. It's much more efficient. So we're just coming down over the landing site. We want to land on this large white, uh, large flat area here. So I'm going to use the engines. They have more than enough power here. Originally, I would have gone with a poodle, but then I realized that the containment tank I had access to was a 1.25 meter version. So that's sitting at the bottom, and then the ISRU is a 2.5 meter only, and that obviously sits above that. The smaller part at the bottom actually is good because it lets me attach the drills and everything and then fit everything inside the fairings. But with landing, it's time to actually do become become an oil driller on another planet. So first thing you want to do is make sure you've got your power systems all online. Deploy those solar panels. Deploy those radiators. And then we probably, where's the instrument? We want to see what kind of, we want to scan here. So we want to right click, there we go. And it tells us numbers. Who cares about numbers? Let's just start drilling. So deploy the drill, the drill will descend, the dr drills are quite long, uh, I should point out, you know, so you don't need to have them necessarily as close to the ground as I have them. 
they, they are quite capable of ex extending deep into the crust of the planet. So after deploying them, you actually have to turn them on and they will start mining ore. And you can see ore is now streaming into the tank, ready to be utilized by the, the ISRU system. That's what the U means, utilize. So I am going to make a liquid fuel and oxidizer. And now, yes! Liquid fuel and oxidizer is slowly filling that main tank and now we are harvesting these resources and we will potentially be able to use them in future missions. But, uh, I mean, and what we'll do is we will send spacecraft into orbit of Minmus where this thing will launch, rendezvous... Oh, look at the animation! Ah, oh, I hadn't noticed that this thing was beautifully animated like that before. Oh, it's little... Pistons going there as it refines fuel. Yeah, so it will work under time acceleration as well. Yeah, the idea is that you want to... Uh, you'll fill this thing up and then launch it into orbit. It is possible technically to dock on the surface of a planet using like rovers with um, docking ports at the correct altitude. That is not necessarily... Um, it frequently doesn't work if you haven't planned things right. I, I found on several occasions where I thought two things had docking ports at the same height that they couldn't actually dock because there was a height difference. Uh, you can also try, you know, flying a spacecraft on top and docking it onto that if you want. That is not a task for the faint-handed or those short of patience. It's much better to just uh, keep the docking in space where gravity isn't distracting you. So, you you know, this thing is big enough, it can fly into orbit carrying, you know, most of that tank of fuel, dump maybe, you know, two-thirds of that tank into a tanker in orbit and then return to the surface. And, uh, you know, there you go. You have a fuel system, a fuel mining system, and it is not trapped deep inside the gravity well of a giant planet. So, yeah, th I think this is where we're stopping this tutorial series. It's like 30 episodes. I probably could have cut it down to a whole lot less than that, but uh, I decided to try and go with comprehensive playthroughs. So, yeah, I don't doubt there will be other questions, and they will probably be answered, you know, during other videos. But this is the end of this series. I'm happy for those that have continued to watch it. And uh, I'll get on with something else. <laughs> Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.